Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, antibiotics which target bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. So that's what we're going to look at. We are going to look in detail at the bacterial cell wall biosynthesis process. And uh, when doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to see where uh, certain pharmacological agents and pharmac and they're not just uh, pharmacological agents, they are actually pharmaceutical agents, they are hugely used. Uh, we're going to see how they work to block this uh, bacterial cell wall biosynthesis. Okay, and I'm going to warn you, this is a long pathway and uh, it's got, I'm going to put in a lot of detail. So, uh, I hope it will uh, be helpful for your understanding of this topic, um, but it is a long pathway. Right, okay, so, we begin then. Uh, so, the first thing you have to do is if you have a bacteria here, let's say this is our bacterial cell, the first thing that has to happen is you have to make the uh, components out of which the uh, cell wall is actually made. And a few uh, antibiotics actually do work by stopping you from actually making the components that you need in order uh, to make the cell wall. Okay, so that's what we're going to start off with. We are going to look at the synthesis of the components that are uh, used to uh, make the cell wall. And this occurs in uh, the cytoplasm of the cell. And what we're going to do is we're going to assemble uh, the component of, uh, that we're going to use to make the cell wall. And we're going to assemble it on the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer, eventually anyway. Initially, we're going to synthesize it in the cytoplasm, and then we're going to dock it on the inner leaflet of the um, phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so let's begin then. So, the starting material out of which we build bacterial cell walls is a uh, molecule known as n acetyl glucosamine and we are going to see this molecule a lot glucosamine this is the basis for it all basically n acetyl glucosamine right so we need to see what is the structure of this molecule and by the way it will often be abbreviated to NAG rather than having to write n acetyl glucosamine out continually and that should have a little dash there Okay, so N-acetylglucosamine. So let's see the structure of this molecule. Right, so it's based clearly on glucosamine, and it has an acetyl group on the amino terminus of that glucosamine molecule. So let's have a look at the structure of glucosamine, and then we'll put on our acetyl group then. So the structure of glucosamine is that it's based on glucose. So glucose is basically this um, six-membered ring where five of the members are carbons and one is an oxygen. And then off of that carbon, you have coming out of the page towards you, you then have another carbon with a hydroxyl group coming off it and uh, two hydrogens coming off it, okay? And then going back away from you, you have a hydrogen going off from that, op from that same carbon. Now, um, because these, I just want to stress that these, um, whether the group is coming out or going in, that is actually important uh, because other, um, other um, monosaccharides, such as galactose, the difference between galactose and glucose actually depend is that the uh, groups, their orientation, i.e. whether they come out of the page or go into the page, is different, basically. So this is important. Right. Okay, uh, so next one, uh, this carbon you have a hydroxyl group going into the page and a hydrogen coming out, okay? So here's your hydrogen coming out of the page. And then this next group you're going to have a hydroxyl group coming out of the page here, like so, and a hydrogen going back in towards the page. Then on this next carbon you have a hydrogen coming out of the page from this carbon, so here's a hydrogen coming out of the page and going into the page, you then have your amino group. So this is the amino group of uh, glucosamine. Now, if this was just normal glucose, you'd have a hydroxyl group where this amino group is. 
Okay, and then the final carbon, you have a hydroxyl group coming out of the page, and that's what this, um, just to make it crystal clear, this sort of um, bond drawn with this um, triangle shape means coming out of the page, and then these bonds drawn with the dashed line means going into the page. Okay, so, so far, that is the structure of glucosamine, basically, glucosamine. Right, so we want N-acetyl glucosamine. So to turn this molecule of glucosamine into N-acetyl glucosamine, all you have to do is add an acetyl group to this N group here. So, we take off one of these hydrogens, basically, to convert it, and I'll do it in a different colour. Right, so we take off one of these hydrogens, so this is going to go, basically, and instead we bind this nitrogen to a carbon, which is doubly bonded to oxygen, and then has a methyl group here. And that group, this entire group of this carbo carbo carbonyl group with the methyl group here, that's what's known as an acetyl group. And it comes, obviously, from acetic acid, or ethanoic acid. Uh, acetal is the old name, and it's still very pervasive in biochemistry. In um, proper chemistry, hardcore chemistry, they'd call this an ethanoil group. Uh, but in biochemistry, it's still referred to as an acetal group. So this is the acetal group. So, basically, what we've done is we've stuck an acetal group onto the amino terminus, well, the amino group of glucosamine. So we have got N-acetyl glucosamine. So this entire molecule now is N-acetyl glucosamine. And basically, this is the starting material out of which we are going to build the cell wall. Oh dear, we're going into that box, never mind. So we're going to make the cell wall out of this N-acetyl gl glucosamine. Right, okay, so the first conversion we are going to do to this molecule is that we are going to add on a, UT, uh, a UDP molecule, which is a uridine diphosphate molecule. So we're going to add on uridine diphosphate, or UDP. Okay, and let me show you the structure of UDP, because we're going to um, add it on in a way that will make knowing the structure of UDP worthwhile. So uridine diphosphate, then, is the next thing in this pathway. So, uridine diphosphate consists of a ribose group here, so we'll draw the ribose here, like so. And then... What you have coming off is the organic base, which is, in this case, uridine. And the structure of uridine is that it's a pyrimidine, basically, which means that um, it's a six-membered ring where you have two of the members being nitrogen. Okay, so I'll draw the six-membered ring here now. And two of the members of this ring are nitrogen, basically, like so. Uh, now, strictly speaking, a pyrimidine ring is uh, a six-membered ring like this, where you have uh, four of the members carbons and two of the members nitrogens. And the nitrogens have to be split apart like this. So you can't have, for instance, a nitrogen here and then a nitrogen here. That would not be a pyrimidine ring. They have to have a single carbon in between them, basically. And strictly speaking, a pyrimidine ring should have alternating double and single bonds like a benzene ring. In this case, those, um, those um, double bonds have been broken down to single bonds in certain positions, at least. And the only double bond that remains is one that you have here, basically. Okay, so the double bond that would have been here and the double bond that would have been here, they have been broken. And the way that you've broken them is you've put a carboxyl group on this carbon here. And you've also put a carboxyl group on this carbon up here. So basically, you have um, you have broken one of the um, one of the double well one of the bonds of the double bond, and instead you've put a carboxyl group carbonyl group up here and a carbonyl group here. Um, sorry, if I if I call that a carboxyl group, I do apologise. A carbonyl group it should be right. And off this nitrogen, you then have a hydrogen, and off these two carbons, you then have hydrogens. Right, so that's the organic base, uracil, basically. Uracil, this is. Okay, so uh, in uridine diphosphate, you have uracil bonded to, um, uh, to a ribose sugar. So here is the ribose, and ribose has 
uh, hydroxyl groups coming off the second and the third uh, carbons of this uh, five-membered group. So you have a hydroxyl group here and a hydrogen there, a hydroxyl group here, a hydrogen there, okay? And then off this fourth carbon, you have a uh, fifth carbon along with a hydrogen. And then off this fifth carbon, you then have a hydroxyl group, which is going to have phosphate groups put on it. Now, if this was just uh, uridine, then it would be uh, uracil, the organic base, with the ribose sugar, and you would have a hydroxyl group in this position. But it's uridine diphosphate, so we have bound two phosphate groups to this hydroxyl group. So where should I show these? I'll show them going up like this. So we put on two phosphate groups onto this uh, hydroxyl group, like so. Okay, so here are the two phosphate groups. Right. Okay, and that overall is the structure of uridine diphosphate, which we would usually abbreviate to UDP. Right, so now what happens is you add this uridine diphosphate molecule onto your glucosamine molecule, and the way you add it is you add it on, you take this hydroxyl group of this um, second phosphate group of the uridine diphosphate, and you add, bind it, you make a, um, a um, well, you undergo a condensation reaction with this hydroxyl group of the glucosamine. Okay, right, so what you're going to create is um, glucosamine uh, UDP, basically, or, well, UDP N-acetyl glucosamine. Okay, so you take an N-acetyl glucosamine molecule here, which will denote NAG, and you take a UDP molecule, and you bind those together to make UDP N-acetyl glucosamine. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, denote this by a cartoon structure. Rather than drawing the entire structure out again, I will um, draw a six-membered ring for our UDP, uh, well, for our glucosamine, rather, Here's our six-membered ring for the glucosamine. There's that um, sixth carbon going off up there. So that's this carbon up here. And then we've got this amino group coming down here uh, with the acetyl group. So I'll put that um, here as well. So there's the acetyl group, which is important because this is N-acetyl glucosamine. And then what we'll draw is we'll draw blobs for phosphate groups like so. And then we'll draw... Uh, a, a pentagon to represent the uh, ribose sugar, and then we'll just put uracil like this as an organic base. Okay, so that's our uh, UDP N-acetyl glucosamine made. Right, what we are now going to do is we're going to uh, convert this UDP N-acetyl glucosamine into a UDP N-acetyl muramic acid, and we'll see that we'll continue this discussion in the next video.